Hello everyone and welcome to the Gospel and Homily for the second Sunday of Easter. This Gospel is according to John and it's the same Gospel each year on this second Sunday and as you listen to it you'll know why. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on the, them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My goal is to win a gold medal at the Tokyo Paralympic Games. Fear not, these are not my words, but the words of an elite Australian athlete, Lauren Parker, who suffered horrific injuries doing a training ride four years ago. Both tyres on her bicycle blew out and she was catapulted into a guardrail. Lauren is now a paraplegic and competes as a disabled athlete. She won bronze at the last Commonwealth Games and is the reigning world champion para triathlete. Her comment about herself touched me deeply. I can only move forward with the body I have. Wow. Lawrence is one of many personal resurrection stories. Like each of us, she must have experienced her own three days in the grave, perhaps three months, perhaps three years or more, to emerge as the positive para-triathlete she has become. For us, let's try a variation on what Lauren had to say. I can only move forward with the faith I have. Jesus' disciples were emerging from not only the death of their friend Jesus, but from the agonies of betrayal and cowardice and loss and fear. And they suffered a faith crisis. Of course, coming to faith takes time. And each of Jesus' followers has an unspoken and untold story of how that happened. Your faith journey and mine, each is an incredible mystery 
of so many experiences gradually distilled and reshaped, lovingly appreciated by our God whose grace touches and transforms us. And somehow there is faith within all this. Each of us very different as I commented last Sunday. Some of us faith-filled, some challenged, others sputtering on near empty. Thankfully, our God is smarter than we are and works even with a little faith as we try to move forward with the faith we have. Sometimes we experience blindness in our daily living where we fail to recognize what is really happening to us and within us. This blindness was quite evident in the disciples and especially in Thomas' reaction to the news of Jesus rising. Like the women at Jesus' tomb, sent to be apostles to the apostles and tell them that Jesus is risen, we are often the first evangelizers of one another. But we can only move forward with the faith we have. Perhaps our faith was reawakened at Easter this year. One year on, gathering in large numbers, all ages, offered refreshment in our faith and our bonds as a community. There is that reassurance in the reading from 1 John this Sunday, how love and faith belong together. This is the victory over the world, our faith, Jesus tells us. Let's sit with that insight as the scriptures break open for us the mystery of community. The community that Luke describes in Acts is actually the community Luke expects his readers to create at some point down their road of faith. And it's one of two passages in Acts that inspired St. Augustine. And this is the mystery of community, that faith finds a home in community, where the Lord dwells in each of us and draws us into love of one another. The community of our family is like that, ideally a place of love and harmony where members are free to become their best selves. Though at times families struggle as our lives bump against one another, and bump they do. Somehow family works because deep down we know the message where we need to go, what we need to be. Family works simply because it has to. You and I are changed by the experience of this past year, the uncertainty and the isolation, the unknown, unexpected challenges, for some domestic upset, our faith shaken badly, perhaps. But again, the reality, we can only move forward with the faith we have. Our faith is never static, and one important dimension of making it truly real in our lives is learning to pay attention. Attention to our life experiences, the movements of our hearts, the dynamics of family life. To be more attentive to Jesus, to take the time to look at Jesus, to reflect on who he is, to speak his name, and to listen as he speaks our personal name. And Jesus speaks our personal name like no one else. And to allow ourselves to be led, healed, transformed by our personal experience of Jesus. This may sound like a lot of stuff to do, but Perhaps it's enough for us to be excited by the resurrection, to repeat Alleluia as our prayer in these days, and it will all happen. Yes, we can only move forward with the faith we have. And so Jesus stands in the disciples' midst, and a broken, frightened gathering is transformed. And here we recognize that seemingly unshakable faith is unfinished. 
You and I, like Thomas, weren't actually in the room when Jesus appeared on Easter Sunday night. And at times doubt touches us. Doubting Thomas, many say. That makes me angry. We know how negative labelling is a form of abuse. Families do it, institutions do it, and sometimes the impact is for life. Stupid, dumb, and so on. But today, why not believing Thomas? Because that is exactly what Thomas ultimately did. Thomas teaches us that true faith wavers sometimes and we can find a deeper faith by passing through doubt. No doubt, no faith. I know, I say this every year, I'll say it next year again, but it's true. No doubt, no faith. And of course, doubt is not the opposite of faith. Fear is. And we may need to open our own locked doors, our prejudices, fears, neuroses, anger, negative thoughts. You and I can only move forward with the faith we have. As Christians, I share with you a final thought. You and I can only move forward with the body we have, the body we are, the body of Christ that nourishes us as individuals and as church in the Eucharist. These words St. Augustine never said. He might have if he'd thought of them. But I share them with you, and I dare say Augustine would agree. We are Easter people, and we are the body of Christ. Hallelujah.